Hello, another edition from myself, Jerry, and Emily. So we're going to be doing a messy experiment to show you how to, why Jesus had to die on the cross for us, but also what his blood does for us. So in order to take a part in the craft, you'll need a lighter. So you need a, a responsible adult, a plate, a penny, a candle and a glass and then we don't have red food dye we've got some squash so we'll be using that and we'd like you to watch this video about the anointing of Jesus so please have a watch get your things ready and we can enjoy a messy experiment Zonda Kids presents The Jesus Storybook Bible Every story whispers his name Written by Sally Lloyd-Jones And read by David Suchet Washed with Tears One night, Jesus went to dinner at an important leader's house. The important leader invited his important friends. They were all just sitting down to eat when a woman walked in. She was not invited, but everyone knew who she was. Who does she think she is? the guests whispered. How dare she? The woman was a big sinner and everyone knew it. Well, it was easy to see. After all, she had broken the rules and done bad things. The woman walked straight up to Jesus. She was carrying very expensive perfume. Now, the thing about perfume back then was that it didn't come in bottles. It came in jars, and the jars were made out of precious stone, like alabaster. But here's the catch. The jars didn't have a lid or a stopper or anything, so the only way you got the perfume out was if you broke the jar. And once you broke the jar, that was it. You had no more. Most people didn't use perfume because it was too precious. They just kept it on a shelf and looked at it. So you see, this perfume was her most precious thing in all the world. It was her treasure. The woman knelt down before Jesus like he was a king. She held Jesus' feet in her hands and started to cry. Her tears fell onto Jesus' feet, washing them. She kissed his feet and dried them with her long, dark hair. And then she did something strange. She broke the jar and poured the perfume all over his feet. Everyone gasped. What a waste! Over someone's feet? Such expensive perfume? It smelled like lilies in a summer field. Jesus looked at the woman and he smiled at her. What she had done was the most wonderful thing. Just as Samuel had anointed David, God's true king, all those years before, so this woman had anointed Jesus, not with oil, but with her tears. The important people were cross. They thought Jesus should not be kind to this woman. That woman is a sinner, they grumbled. We're the good ones. And it's true. They did look good from the outside. After all, they were keeping all the rules. But Jesus could see inside people, and inside, in their hearts, Jesus saw that they did not love God or other people. They were running away from God. They thought they didn't need a rescuer. They thought they were good enough because they kept the rules. But sin had stopped their hearts from working properly, and their hearts were hard and cold. This woman knows she's a sinner, Jesus told them. 
She knows she'll never be good enough. She knows she needs me to rescue her. That's why she loves me so much. You look down on this woman because you don't look up to God. She is sinful on the outside, but you are sinful on the inside. The important people shook with anger. Jesus turned to the woman and smiled. Your sins are forgiven, he said. You trusted me, and God has rescued you. Who does Jesus think he is? The important people whispered. Only God can forgive sins. They didn't believe Jesus was God's son. The more Jesus loved people and helped them, the more the important people and leaders hated him. They were afraid people would follow Jesus instead of them. They were jealous and angry. Angry enough to kill Jesus. Right, now that you've watched the story of the anointing of Jesus, we're going to do our craft. So we have our plate, we have our coin, and this is a lovely description of how we demonstrate what sin is. Now, sin is just a special word that the Bible uses for when we do things wrong. Now, if that coin were me, Emily, and I was to tell a lie, let me just dribble a little bit of squash on. And then I decided to not share my Easter egg. A little bit more. And if I wasn't very kind and didn't help my neighbor, then a little bit more. And I think we've got enough there. So now you can see the coin is all covered in the squash, which represents the sin of the world and the things that everybody does wrong because we all make mistakes and we all get things wrong. But if we say thank you to Jesus during this Easter time and say sorry for the things that we do wrong, he becomes the light of our world. So we're going to light the candle. And we're going to put him in the center of the world. And he completely covers the world from sin. So we're going to cover our glass. And now you can see how Jesus covers the world and takes away our sin. That penny is no longer submerged. And the candle who represents Jesus completely submerges or sucks up all of the squash. Isn't that fantastic? That is such a good experiment. I hope you enjoy doing that with a responsible adult. And Emily, thank you for being such a wonderful helper. On Wednesday, Emily will be leading the Compline for Thursday evening. And we hope to see you and hope you participate then. Happy Easter week.